This comes from Technology Review. Uh, and I, I want to point off right off the bat, as you can see here, this is from August 9th of this year. So it's a very recent story. And the reason I bring that up is because one of the first things that they say uh, is, is, is interesting. So in, in the article, it says it's going to be illegal in California to sell gene therapy kits unless they carry a warning that says not to use them on yourself. But again, you know, like a lot of these warnings, is, there, is that really going to be effective? Is that going to stop anybody from doing it if they're determined to do it? Now, what's interesting is this line right here that says, just one wrinkle, we're not sure any kit, any such kit exists, not yet anyway. Now, I don't know what this line is in reference to. A little bit later on, as we'll see, they actually do sort of clarify what they mean when they say gene editing kit. But you can do a simple search, and I've done one here that you can take a look at. You can do a simple search, CRISPR-Cas9 kit, and, and look at all of these ads. You have a whole bunch of ads that come up over here that you can see. Uh, and, and look, you know, no funny business, just, just a strict Google search for CRISPR-Cas9. I didn't put any extra keywords or anything uh, in there, CRISPR-Cas9 kit. Um, and you get ad upon ad, uh, you know, clones, uh, Thermo Fisher, AMSBO. Uh, there, there's, a whole, there's a whole bunch of them. And here's, here's articles. Here's more. Uh, Origin, this right here, the Odin, that's the one that is going to be referenced in the article that we're going to look at. Um, so it's confusing that they say that because you can buy these kits. They're, they're widely available. You can get them from uh, many different manufacturers, as, as is proven here. Uh, but again, they're going to make a, a distinction that, I, that they'll explain, but I don't know how important it actually is to make this distinction. The fact is, these things are available today. Anybody can get them. You can get them. Your kids can get them. And uh, we're living in an age where you can biohack, you can genetically edit yourself in your own basement, and there's no regulations around it. Um, so this article says the uh, consumer protection rule is in a bill. It's signed by Governor Gavin Newsom on July 30th, and it will become law in January. It targets hobbyist kits employing CRISPR, the, the, the versatile gene editing tool that has revolutionized gene research. Now, it says sales of certain do-it-yourself CRISPR supplies will be prohibited unless they carry a bold notice, quote, stating that the kit is not for self-administration, end quote. Well, again, what would be the point of... Uh, who, who is going to go out and buy a kit that is determined to use it they get it, they see the label, and they decide, ah, I probably shouldn't use it. You know, if somebody's buying it because they want to use this on themselves, a label isn't going to do anything to stop that. Uh, so it continues. It's the first law in the U.S. to directly regulate CRISPR, says its author, Republican State Senator Ling Ling Chang. Here's, a, here, here's an actual tweet. Um, I believe this is a tweet, or maybe it's a Facebook post. Uh, but Senator Ling Ling Chang uh, says, I'm proud to announce the... Governor signed my bill addressing human biohacking. CRISPR is becoming widely available, but many in the scientific community have sounded the alarm that it could have negative consequences outside uh, professional labs. The first ever legislation addressing emerging CRISPR technology will help prevent safe, uh, safety mishaps by amateur users of CRISPR kits. Learn more, and then they're, they're, uh, she pr provides a link. Now, again, I, I think it's great that they are actually trying to take steps towards regulating this stuff. And, and usually I'm not in the, I'm not really in favor of, of a whole bunch of regulations on things, but on this I am, because this, this is something that could become a public health uh, crisis. You know, if, the, if you have edited genes that are allowed to just propagate in the gene pool, well, that affects the rest of us for generations to come. There is no putting that genie back in the bottle. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm all for regulations, but, but I don't know how effective just putting a warning label on this stuff is really going to be. I mean, I guess it's better than nothing, but uh, but still, I mean, I, I would say just ban it all together. Uh, but maybe, maybe they're not able to do that. So it says uh, the law appears to take aim at a California resident, uh, Josiah Zayner, uh, whose Oakland company, the Odin, sells genetic engineering supplies to amateurs online. He won notoriety in 2017 when he filmed himself injecting CRISPR into his own arm. Uh, so, and that's what we were talking about over here. You know, you do you do a Google search for CRISPR Cas9 kit, and on the very first page uh, is right here: DIY do it yourself CRISPR kit, the Odin. Uh, so he's making this this stuff available. That's a picture of of this individual down here. Um, 
So Zayner is saying, quote, it's obviously targeting me, uh, end quote. And he's, you know, if you're not familiar with this guy, he's this, uh, he's this outspoken biohacker. He's, he's also currently under investigation by Calipor the California Department of Consumer Affairs for practicing medicine without a license. Uh, so they're trying to get him on, on that, too. Uh, so it says, asked for examples of products the bill could affect. Chang's staff provided a, li a link to an Amazon ad for a $159 box of supplies sold by Zayner, uh, which, quote, includes everything you need to make precision genome edits in bacteria at home, end quote. You know, there's also worries about what if people flush this stuff down the toilet? You know, what if they're done with their little experiment, they flush it down the toilet, and then it seeps into, uh, in, into the water supply uh, or into our sewer system and things like that and ends up affecting other people. You know, there's a lot of danger here. It says that uh, because that kit targets genes and bacteria, it wouldn't have any effect in humans, and it's not clear why it would need a warning label. Uh, Zayner says, quote, it's like saying a skateboard needs to have a sticker to say it can't be used on the freeway. It doesn't make any sense, end quote. Well, I think it makes perfect sense. And, and to say that it has no effect in humans, I don't, I, I, I wouldn't be so quick to say that uh, because e even, even if that's proven true, would you still want to ingest this stuff? Would you still want this bacteria floating around in your water supply uh, or, or infecting your crops? You know, I, I would think not. Now, MIT Technology Review is not able to find any product uh, currently for sale by Zayner or others that would meet definitions set up by Chang's legislation. And that's the distinction that they're making. And that, that's why I said uh, at the beginning, I don't know how important that distinction really is. Uh, because, again, uh, as, we, as we saw here, you can see all of these uh, kits for sale from many different providers. But, again... The distinction is that it, it that these would not meet the definition set up by Chang's legislation. Well, th th doesn't that just go to show that this legislation is kind of pointless? I mean, it, it should be stricter. It should be more well-defined. That would include uh, that whole list that you can buy online. But, but it says, uh, in any case, the sale of do-it-yourself gene therapy products is already prohibited. In, t in 2017, the FDA... Uh, said selling gene editing products intended for self-administration is against the law because they haven't been approved. All right, but yet again, uh, I know I keep going back to this, but yet again, you can find them. You can find them here. So either either the law is not well defined, or it's allowing for this stuff outside of the parameters of the law, or they're just not enforcing the law. So either way, either way, it's still a big problem. It says uh, that was the year that uh, Zayner. Uh, taunted health authorities by filming himself self in, uh, by filming himself self injecting gene altering substances, and later a separate startup company called Ascendants Biomedical said it planned to sell such independent gene treatments to the public. Uh, Zayner's injection was a, publi a publicity stunt. That's at least what they're saying, uh, but. In practice, commercial gene therapy involves transferring genes into the body using billions of viral particles, which uh, Zayner and other biohackers apparently don't sell and which are hard to make. But again, hard doesn't mean impossible. People can still do this. It's still, it's still available. It's still possible to do. So Nicole Polk, an assistant professor at the University of California in San Francisco, says, quote, we can't even make enough for medical trials right now, end quote. Now, Zayner said that uh, starting in 2017, he did sell one CRISPR product that could target a, a human gene, the one that encodes a protein called uh, myostatin. Removing that gene with CRISPR can enlarge the size of muscles. Zayner says he expected people might use the DNA instructions he was selling as a building block towards genetic enhancements. So there's, the, there's that other distinction. Uh, it, it, will it target a gene or not? But really, what are these kits doing? What are they meant to do? Uh, he says that he admits his customers misunderstood how many further steps would be involved, such as uh, multiplying and purifying the CRISPR molecule. So he says, quote, people were buying it and sending us messages. How do we inject this? End quote. So he, dis he discontinued the product earlier this year. But that, again, that's that one specific product. If you go on to, uh, if you go on to his site here, here, we'll just open this and show you. You have right here a do-it-yourself bacterial gene engineering CRISPR kit. Now, they say because this doesn't uh, directly target the human genome because it's uh, bacterial gene editing that it doesn't affect 
uh, the human genome at all. Uh, but, but again, would you want to be ingesting this stuff? Are you comfortable with uh, people doing their experiments, flushing it down the toilet and having it infect uh, your water supply or your crops or, or, or anything like that? Um, and there's a, it comes with a whole bunch of experiments that you can do, uh, uh, apparently. But So there are products like this on his own website. So I don't know, just because he discontinued one product, and that's what this article is focusing on, that doesn't mean that all these products are discontinued. They're still widely available. So it says, why pass a law to regulate a product that doesn't exist? One reason may be that California leads the world in both technology and legislative uh, nannying. Now, I totally understand the argument against legislative nannying, and, and usually I'm against that. You know, usually I don't want any of that. Most people don't. Uh, but here, I would not consider this to be legislative nannying, because this is something that could actually affect public health. It's not just somebody, it's not just something that somebody is doing in the comfort of their own home and they're not hurting anybody else. This stuff can be passed on through generations. It can, it can uh, get in food supply, it can get in water supply. Uh, it, 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 there's a lot of potential risk with this kind of stuff. I would not consider that legislative nannying personally. Uh, so it says, Chang is the sponsor of numerous bills whose uh, topic range from hit-and-run drones to microchipping dogs and cats at animal shelters. Via a spokesperson, she said she wanted to be proactive and is concerned about amateur use of CRISPR and its impact on consumer safety and public health. Uh, as well, she should be. We all should be. However, again, this 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 piece of legislation. I just don't know how much it's going to curb the problem. Lobbyists uh, familiar with the bill's history say Chang's uh, staff became alarmed by news articles describing how CRISPR could be misused. Uh, and these included an interview in Foreign Policy in which uh, Jennifer Doudna, a, uh, an inventor of the CRISPR tool, described the technology as racing forward without coordination or enough regulation. So again, that comes from the actual inventor of CRISPR, the CRISPR tool, saying that there should be more regulation on this, and it's worrisome that there isn't. If it was up to me, I say just ban the whole thing. We don't need it. But you know, uh, at the very least, we do need more regulation on it. Now, Oliver uh, Rocroy, uh, it's a hard name to say, uh, who's the vice president for government affairs at the California uh, Life Sciences Association, which is a trade group, has uh, said, quote, they said, oh my goodness, there seems to be an underground culture in uh, do-it-yourself bio and do-it-yourself CRISPR, uh, end quote. So he says that uh, a worry was that citizens would flush homemade genetically modified organisms down the toilet. Uh, he continues, quote, it was, is there a contagion scenario where things spin out of control, end quote. So he's saying that that was the concern. Uh, and it's a legitimate concern. Now, Rocroy and Chang's staff at first wanted to outright ban do-it-yourself CRISPR kits. But after the association pushed back, they settled on a warning. So th this, is, this is one of those situations where a compromise doesn't really do any good. Uh, there, there's really no reason to, to put this through unless you can just ban the whole thing, and they, they should ban it because, again, it's a public health issue. It can affect the rest of us uh, who don't want anything to do with it, who don't want to biohack. It can, it can affect the rest of us, so it should be banned. Um, and if they can't ban it, then what's the point of the legislation that's not going to sway anybody from, from trying. But uh, here, so here's a quote from Recroy. Uh, he, he said, and he was explaining the association's objection, quote, the downside of a ban is you are preventing people from carrying out experiments that could lead to something like computers in the 1980s. We didn't want to stop people from using the technology, even if it's in their home, end quote. That's not the downside of the ban, and that is not the worry. You know, if you're experimenting with computers, if you're building a computer in your garage, there's not really much of a chance that that's going to affect your neighbor. You know, maybe you have a power outage or something if you're if you're really doing some intense experimentations or something like that. But you're not gonna you're not gonna seriously affect the health of your neighbor. You're not gonna be infecting his food in that way. You're not gonna be uh, doing something to him that that he he doesn't want done. That is not the downside of the ban. The downside of CRISPR and gene editing, just in general, being available to the public, is that uh, this could affect your neighbor in 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 serious ways. Uh, your neighbor could be ingesting bacteria that he didn't want to. Even if you say it's harmless, it doesn't matter. Uh, he could be in, ingesting something that you're trying to dispose of um, without him even knowing it. So that that actually takes away some of the neighbor's freedom. It, 
I, I think it's a completely ridiculous comparison trying to compare this to um, experimenting with computers in the 1980s. Uh, it says, uh, arguably a more well-founded worry for legislators is that consumers might emulate experienced biohackers like Zayner, urged on by his promotional videos. There was a whole fad in the 90s of these prank shows. It wasn't just one. There were, there were plenty of them. But uh, th these prank shows, prank shows got really popular in like the late 90s, early 2000s. And then you had teenagers that would go out and try to film videos of their own. Some of them got seriously injured or even died trying to do these stunts or these pranks. And so some of the worry of the legislators is that uh, uh, videos showing how to biohack, which are available online today, there are manuals on how to do this stuff, but that that will only progress. They'll They'll get competitive, they'll try to one-up one each other, uh, one-up each other, uh, one another, and that that could lead to some catastrophic consequences. But but the problem is it's not localized with the one person who is doing it. You know, so you might say, well, it's just the community doing it, they can do what they want. But again, uh, this bleeds out to the rest of the public. So the comparison to the, the those prank shows isn't really valid either, because while while some got involved in the temptation, it didn't really affect other people who weren't doing it themselves. You know, um, if you have your friend shove you in a shopping cart into into like a curb or something, and you go flying in a bush, you're really the only one that's going to get hurt. Unless there's somebody standing there, uh, they're not. You know, somebody, some innocent bystander, they're they're not going to be hurt. But even if they were, they could sue you anyway. So there's already legal restrictions around that kind of stuff. So the issue, the it's not really a fair comparison to compare it to those types of prank shows, because again, this can bleed out into the public without any uh, any legal regulations around it. Uh, so that, that's where we are with biohacking today. Uh, the, the, the most that it seems like is going to happen is they'll put a warning label on it, which, again, isn't going to do anything. They will be able to just continue doing what they're doing, and uh, what we need is either an outright ban on this stuff uh, or we need a, lo a lot tighter uh, uh, restrictions. And if it was up to me, I say just ban it all. We don't need it.